Hello everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of Trapping TV. This week we're going to feature Scott Adams making a basic dirt hole set. Then we're going to go in and we're going to finish our control line in Alabama. Let's get at it, sit back and enjoy. Take time and show a basic dirt hole. This set will catch all fur. We're using it for predators, fox, coyotes, uh, raccoons, etc. You need a trial. It don't have to be a name brand one by no means. Just a good digging and we'll start. I always look for a small rise, a natural clump. I'm going to dig into this sort of like a little rodent burrow. Hopefully this soil, oh, we picked a good place to do it. I'm just going to throw my dirt here because it's all sand, which is, makes this easier. One of the keys to the dirt hole set is deep. On my trial, there's knurling. I like to go at least that, which is 9, 12, 14 inches. Just a post hole, sometimes with this trial, I like to take it and dig the side. A lot of the people have always said, give the animal an idea that the hole's going somewhere. Uh, we look at it as just a hole, but in their world, they're eating. So my hole's dug. I'm going to get my good bed and hammer. And I'm going to put this trap on the center. Uh, be a little offset. This ground is so easy to work with. It's beautiful. Just going to scrape that back because I can blend this in pretty good when I'm done. Using a disposable. Get it started. Some people set them, that's going to hold, I'm going to leave it down there. Trap set, a little too deep so I'm going to kick some And I'm going to start packing around my jaws. About every type of trap you set, the most crucial thing I can tell you is bed your trap good, solid. When I push here, I don't want it to come up. The only movement I want is right there down and the jaws coming up. I'll even pack inside the jaws. Some of y'all that are scared of your traps, snapping your finger, they're not adjusted right. The more we do this with good equipment, we don't worry about it, we just get the job done. That is bedded perfect. There's my hole. Nine inches is back here. So a coyote or a fox is both very acceptable to this set. Some guys want to set them here and here. That works and has its places, but we're not done yet. Uh, we'll make this all work. Now we're going to take peat moss. I didn't bed my trap in peat moss. I'm using my peat moss to get under the pan to keep the trap working. There's my pan. I'm going to just work some in underneath the pan with my finger. You can't compress it enough if it's good dry peat. Now you guys in the northern states, you got to watch it will freeze. That should be plenty. We'll still cover that up. Now I'm going to level this out with Sifton. Now throughout my Sifton, I open my pan. I want to know where that's at. I take my hand, pack around. Now the loose soil is right there in my target area. Now we start to level this all out. Sort of like a kid playing in a sandbox. Some people put a stick for the dog, for an animal won't step right on the dog. I've done it, I'm not fond of it, I might miss an animal or two. But I could put a few little blockings here and there to help steer the animal to the trap. 
not 100% necessary. Gray Fox could come through. I want them to work the set. I want them to move their feet around and the low average, I'll catch it. Now we have our dirt hole ready. I'm gonna apply bait and lure. Gonna get some bait, fairly generous gob, and I'm gonna put it way down that hole. I want an animal to have to work for it. Then I'm gonna get a little bit of lure. I'll scrape my lure applicator. And uh, some of this stuff you have to stir a little. I put a good old gob, I'll smudge it on top of the hole. And that's baited and lured. And one final last thing I like to do is put a grass ball or a wad of sheep's wool. Just to act like a mouse nest to give the animal a little bit something to grab if he works the set. That way it looks more natural like a mouse nest and that's more foot movement every time I get him to put his foot up and down. We've got a, a red fox here. This is where we caught the raccoon the other day. Because this is so open, I went ahead and staked my drag instead of having to walk clear over there because it's so open. The uh, it's pretty cool to catch red fox because in most of the south, they're just not that common anymore, but I think they're making a comeback. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put the remake in. I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera, but I want to talk about how this set was set up to make it. This is pure redneck renaissance trapping, and it's almost like hippie trapping where you got to be holistic because I'm trying to think how's an animal going to sneak up on me. I've got two punch holes right here. I just mounted this up. It's already tore up from two animals being caught. It's the same type set that I've done. When I get done, this trap's going to be blended in very similar to this. Now an animal, some will come straight up to the front and some will circle and come around. So I've gave him a little place to do it. And when he's coming around to stretch his neck out, he'll be standing on that trap. Since these are both the same type traps, I don't know which one caught the fox, but either one will work and it just kind of doubles my odds. That thing, that thing is beautiful. Wow. I got yellow eyes. Awesome. Usually they're like light brown. I the black one I caught last year wasn't this black. Well, we're lucky enough to have the landowner with us today, and it's real nice. I mean, you can tell them you're catching stuff when they're with us. They get to see it. We caught an otter back on the lake, which is doing damage to their fish. And the next set, we pull up and have this nice black coyote. So how would you think of it? I think it's, uh, we're, y'all saying y'all catching them, y'all catching them. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> yeah. one of each so far. It feels good. I mean, every coyote we catch saves multiple deer in the oh, springtime. Yeah. So, so I feel good. Deer and turkeys, and I've seen, even this year, I've been on several hunts where uh, coyotes have come by chasing fawns and uh, running them all around underneath yeah. us. And uh, just, you know, it's, it's tough bow hunting to... Oh yeah, and it's one, one part of deer management that a lot of the big hunters don't really emphasize is the predator management. Because heck, you save one deer, that deer can turn into a 160 inch uh, 10 pointer. Absolutely. You never know, but it's just better to, to save the deer before a coyote gets it. But heck. 
we got a lot of sets to check yet. We're only yeah. about 10 sets into our whole line today on your farm. We got about 100 sets to check and all. So we'll dispatch this thing and move on to the next one. Gotta find his brothers and sisters. Yeah. <laughs> in Alabama. First canine set of the day we checked. Got a nice bobcat. Um, the set we had was pretty much just a dirt hole. Had some cat urine there. I think I had cat collector in this one um, and a chunk of beaver meat. But good way to start the morning. Gotta love catching them cats. This is a prime location for a possum. I know they're attracted to pavement but I'm gonna try bare dirt. It attracts a lot of wildlife. Uh, it also makes a nice feeding area for the possum. My trap's set and ready. And I'll show you success one way or another. Well, we got our coyote. He's all muddy. Now the fun will start with this muddy mess to make a remake and clean up the yipper dog. His fond eating days are over. That's right here. Drag is gone. Got a dirt hole right here. There he is over here. He's laying down here hiding behind us. He did not go very far on that drag before he got wrapped into everything here. You can see he's got it twisted around the bottom of this tree. That's a saber tooth drag. Looks like a nice male coyote. We got to get this guy put down. Uh, we're actually pulling traps today, and we've got about 80 more traps to go. So we'll get him down and head down the road to see what else we got today. We got we got an ot dry land otter here. What we had here, this river is really windy, so the otters they won't follow the whole river. They want to go in a straight line. They got a crossover coming up through the woods here, going to the river over there. The river's probably 300 yards over there where it winds back around. There was just a faint trail. We got a 330 in the water. Didn't catch anything there. But I put a leg hold right in the middle of this trail, punched two holes, put two different lures in there, and you can see the results. Those sets, you got to look hard for them. Sometimes you can't see their trails real well, but when you do and you put a trap there, it'll pay off. One less egg eater on this farm. As much as we don't like catching possums, the landowners love it because these things they eat duck eggs, turkey eggs, quail eggs, everything like that. So it's a good thing to get rid of them. Just helps out the wildlife and the farmers really like you for it. Here's our location. We got food plot behind us, big cattle pasture, a big wood lot, these two fence lines come together. Got a possum today, but you'll have that when you're canine trapping.
Scott can't keep up with this. I'm gonna smoke him. But, but Look at that, guys. That we got a double. A double! Double D on the doggy. Hind foot catch. Hey, Scott, look at this. Hind foot catch. Hind foot catch. You know what, what the, the that? They can both go to Canada with hind foot catches. We just pulled up this location and we had a double. Yeah, it's kind of fun for me today because we have one of the guys I looked up to when I was young. He's riding the line with us. We rode the line with him this morning. He caught a couple of predators over there. And it's just fun getting all four of us together. Norm's over there with Scott. Look at that coyote. This is an ideal location. Or it's kind of these big pine, pine plantations. I don't know even know what they're. What do they call this kind of terrain, Clint? South Alabama. South Alabama terrain. It's just goofy. Well, they put these deer food plots in the center of these, and it's a real good location. We're setting on these, I guess, tractor or truck paths. We're just setting the edges of them. There's not really a whole lot of intersections to look for, but them coyotes are going to run these edges. So we're just setting just off of them, and you can see it worked here. We got a double. Well, since you looked up to Norm all these years, I'm glad I got to ride with you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are in a predator control line. Mike and me got a nice double on. <laughs> this doesn't get any better in this. This is what it's all about. <laughs> off the property at one check. It's great to feel this as a trapper, and the landowner's going to be just. <laughs> if he wouldn't interrupt, I could finish this, but the landowner will be so happy with this because, I mean, it's two more coyotes off his place. That's. Oodles of fawns we're saving, turkeys, and all that good stuff. Pulling up this set, looked like I saw something. I see one bouncing. Let's go see how he looks. Looks like a nice coyote. You've seen us at this set the last couple days. We caught a coon the first day, possum yesterday. Now we got a nice coyote. Real good fur on him. Just a great dog to be to catch here. Well, we had a good day here. This is off one landowner's property. It's 2,800 acres, and in the last three days we've caught almost 20 predators off that property, and we're running. What are we running, Scott? 60 sets or so throughout the property. Yeah, a lot of doubles though. So it's amazing how many predators are on property that you don't realize. I mean, that's quite a bit. Think of how many fawns we saved, eggs we've saved. We're definitely doing some damage here. One of these guys is guilty of eating a deer in his lifetime. Oh, guaranteed. Like you said, all the scat that we'd seen throughout the week all has deer hair in it. So hopefully, this one. He ho said it. hopefully we can uh, save these guys a mature deer so they can harvest a trophy someday. Yeah, they're going to see some good results. I bet they won't hear them when they're on their porch at night as bad. Probably poor lonely ones howling for their buddies. Yep, and that's the idea. Man wildlife management. And this is a big part that people overlook. They're so worried about food plots. They're so worried about all the other high-tech gadgets they need to, to grow deer when this is a big part of it. you gotta, you got to have them live in there before you can grow them. Good we all make mistakes. We all do good. Well, this is actually pool day. We're going to head back to Ohio and we're going to set a line up there. So we appreciate you guys coming along with us on our uh, Alabama line. See you next week. How's dinner, guys? We're starving to death. Great. Yeah, look it's at amazing. this. Look at this stuff. Scott, you hungry? action right here. It's like skinning critters. He who skins more gets more of the fur check. Just like in the possum race here in second place. <laughs> I got tomorrow yet to pull. We must have done good to deserve all this, huh?
Yep. Uh. Trapping what you make of it. Crab legs. <laughs> Thank you, Clint. Predator control group is wonderful to work for. The perks for this business. <laughs> you just you know, there's all these guys right now, like we've stayed before, where you're sleeping in barns and tents. Old slave shacks. <laughs> yeah, we don't do it that way. <laughs> We're cabin with hot water and Ooh. TV. Hell, we even got a shower. Yeah. 